Hi, this is Petey at Bergsburg Arcade at BergsburgArcade.com and this is tutorial 128. Now in this tutorial we're going to start creating our items. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. And I'm just going to come down to my scripts folder. And I don't believe I have one for generators yet. I'll make a folder for that later. For now I'm just going to make a new C-sharp script. And I'll just call that script item gen rater. I'll save that off there and open it up mono develop. And there's a couple of things I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna get rid of the system collections because I know I won't be using that. I'm gonna make a static class. So this class will be available at all times and you're only ever going to get the one and I called it an item gen or a tour and we do not have to inherit from mono behavior so I'll get rid of my start and update since those come from mono behavior and I'm going to start off with just creating a public static and this returns an item and I'm going to call this one create item. Now it doesn't take any parameters and it will return one. So just to start off with, if we look at the way our system is working right now, when we open our chest and it comes down to the open part, now it goes through and it checks down here to see if this chest has been used already. And if the chest has not been used, uh, then it calls this function populate and it just passes in a five. Now that five is just basically telling it how many items to actually create. And we just have this little bit of code in here that just basically creates uh, random empty items for us. Uh, instead of doing this now, we're actually going to call this new method that we made. So first let me set up uh, an item here to return or we'll get an error. So I'm just going to say item and I'll just call it temp is equal to new item and I'm not going to pass any parameters into it but I will return it I'm going to save that off I'm going to come back to my chess script and right down here where we're adding the item uh, let me see first we'll get rid of this new part where it says new item because now we're not just going to create a new item to put in there. We're actually going to call this item generator script and we're going to tell it to create an item for us and return it back. And the item that's returned back is what we want to add. So we can say item generator dot create item. And right now we're not passing any parameters. Uh, later on we will be passing in parameters but we just want to get the functionality working right. And I'm going to take this line here out where we're changing the name. And I always like a little space after my for loop. So I'm just going to save that off. Now I'm going to come back into item generator. And I have it generating a new item. And I'm going to take that item and I'm going to want to set its name just for testing purposes to make sure this function is working. So we're going to say temp name is equal to Actually, if we just take what we cut out of the other one with the loop window, we can do, is to do it like this. So we're taking temp, which is our new item we create. We're going to call its name, and we're just going to basically assign the random name over here. So let's save that off. We'll go into Unity, make sure our item generator is actually working now. So I'm going to start it up, and it should work the exact same way as it did before, except now we have that method pulled out of our chess class and put into a new static class called item generator. I'll open it up and there we go. And of course we add them. So we got that part working. Let's head back into mono develop and right above here before we do anything I want to start outlining what's going to happen when this function is called. So my chess calls this class and it says, you know, hey, or this method in this class says, hey, generate an item. 
but we don't know what kind of item to generate. So the first thing we're going to want to do is figure that out. So we'll say decide what type of item to make. And that's actually pretty easy. I'm just going to come up here. Well, I'll come down to the bottom. And I'm going to create an enumeration of the different types of items that we can actually create. So I'm going to make them public. Let's see, enum. And I'm just going to say item types. Or item type. And let's just come in here and actually list some of the items that I know I'm going to want to make off the top of my head. Basically the ones that we already have classes for. So I'm going to say armor. I know I want that. Weapon. Uh, potion. Uh, scroll. Well, that's enough for now. Uh, if you have different classes, I'm not even sure how many classes we actually have. But I know I should have a, a class that will at least make these items. So we'll probably come back and add more later. But for now, that's good enough. So what we're going to want to do is basically just get the length of this uh, enumeration and uh, just pick one at random. But what will be the next step? After we've actually uh, decided what type we want to make, uh, what should we do next? Well, we're going to want to call uh, a method to create that base item. So, for instance, if it comes back and decides that we, we're going to make a, an eye, our, a weapon here, we'll want to have some method in place that will actually go out and create all the stuff that we need for the weapon and return it back. So once we have that item created, all we're going to want to do is return the new item. And we've actually got that part done right down here. Now there's a few intermediate steps that we're also going to want to do. Uh, for instance, when we're uh, call the method to create the base item. But we're in that method, we're going to want to make sure that we fill in all of the values for that item type. And I've gone ahead and opened up the weapon class. And if we notice the weapon class has a, a, a list of values that are set just for, for weapons. And if you want to take a look here, it comes from buff items. So we'll also want to make sure that we cover any values that uh, pertain to the buff item as well. And then of course buff item uh, comes from item. And then we have all the properties for the item. So let's just start off by doing the weapon. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create a new public static. This one returns a weapon, and I'm going to call it Create Weapon. And just to make sure we don't get any errors, I'm going to say Weapon, and I'm just going to call this Weapon Temp as well, is equal to New Weapon. I'm not going to pass any parameters, and I'm just going to return Weapon. Now the reason why I'm making this public as well is Later on, we might want to generate maybe a specific type of item. And it'd just be nice to be able just to call this one method, generate weapon, or create weapon, sorry, and have it come back as a weapon. Another way we could do it is to pass in some sort of parameter here where we say create item and the type of item we want, which, you know, would be a weapon. And just have it check in here. So instead of deciding what type to make, it, it's passed in the value and it would automatically call this method. And to be honest, I kind of like that better now that I think of it. So I'm going to make this private. So you no longer call to make a weapon. You're going to have to do it through the create item. So let's go down here and actually create our first item. So where we have this item temp, we'll move that up there. This falls under that field. And this down here should be temp. We don't return the what we don't return a the type. We want to return the actual object. Okay, so let's just go through the steps and uh, uh, basically hash out the structure. So call the method that we need to create the base type. 
So we're going to be calling create weapon, right? And we're not going to pass anything for now. But if you look, it returns a weapon. Now, one of the advantages of using this inheritance is that anything that is inherited from item is automatically an item. So even though anything, any weapons we make in game are going to be based on this script and they're going to be of type of weapon, they're also going to be of type whatever they're inherited from. So in this case, every weapon we make in game is going to also be uh, of type buff item and anything that buff item inherits from. In this case, will be item. So that means that anytime we're looking for an item, we can receive uh, pretty much all of our items. So it is a base class. We can receive a weapon as an item. Uh, if that doesn't make too much sense, just start looking up uh, inheritance. It's pretty much the same in every language. So even though I'm creating an item here and I'm storing it as temp, instead of actually making the call to create a new item, what we can actually do is say, give me an item, call it temp, and I'm going to call this function here to actually make it. So what happens is it comes down here, which is going to create a weapon, and it's going to return that. And it can still be stored as an item because technically a weapon is of type item if you go down the hierarchy chain. I know it's a little confusing uh, when you're first starting out, but uh, just pick up a good book on object-oriented programming and uh, it should all become clear pretty quick. So we're going to want to fill out all of the values in there. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to post that down here. And instead of calling it item now, I'm just going to call it a weapon. So we're going to have quite a bit of fields here to fill in. But before I start doing that, I just want to test to make sure the structure that we have set up is working. Uh, what was my error? A local variable named temp is already defined in this scope. That's true right here. So we'll just hit play. Now when I open it up, I should be generating weapons, which is denoted by the W. Great. Uh, we'll stop it off and let's start actually creating the parameters for our weapons. Actually, it looks like we're just over 10 minutes already. So I'm going to save this off and we'll start it up in the next one. Bye-bye.